really began speaking to me about Port St. Joe and uh, about his plans and his purposes here. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but um, let me share this with you. Um, to the prophetic, everything is prophetic. And I try to live in a prophetic place and a prophetic realm. So I'm constantly hearing from the Lord. And, uh, you know, to the pathetic, everything's pathetic. <laughs> and you have to decide which one you're going to be. You're going to either be prophetic or you're going to be pathetic. One or the other. And you got to decide, I'm going to hear from the Lord. And I was telling uh, David before the uh, meeting, I cut my teeth on going out in the woods and getting in my boat in a lake and going out and crying out to God because I wanted to hear His voice. I wanted to know Him. I just didn't want to know about Him. I didn't want Him to be a history lesson to me. I wanted to know this Jesus that had come into my heart and my life. So I spent probably thousands of hours in the woods just crying out to God because I really wanted to know Him. And I'm from, Cheryl and I both are from Demopolis, Alabama, and she and I fell in love with each other in the 10th grade of high school. That's how long we've been running together. And, um, and then I got saved in 76. And when I got saved, I just began going after God with everything that was within me. And just spent hours and hours and hours crying out to the Lord. I, Lord, I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. I, I would cry with Paul. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. And I, my, that is still my heart cry today, even after all these years of following Him. I still cry out, God, I want to know You, because the moment I think that I do, I find that I don't yes. know Him. Yes. And He's always constantly enlarging Himself in our lives yes. to where we can't put Him in a religious box and say, well, this is the way that He is. This is the way that He operates. This is what He does. Because the moment you think you've got God figured out, you find out that you don't. And if you have your Bible, just go with me to Jeremiah 33. I tell you, I'm, I'm going to share, some, uh, share a lot of stories with you tonight and some word as well. Several years ago, I think it was, and it was in October, I don't remember the day, I have to go back and look it up. It was October in 2005. It was about a week before I was going on a elk hunt out in Colorado. And I woke up one morning at 3.33 a.m. And when I woke up, I had never awakened at that time of morning. I looked over at the alarm, alarm clock, 3.33 on the alarm clock, and, and immediately the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And He said, Today begins the Jeremiah 33.3 revolution. I'll never forget that it was actually on Rosh Hashanah when this was. And I'll have to go back and look up Rosh Hashanah back in 2005 and see what date that was. It was Rosh Hashanah in 2005. I'll never will forget, I, I had gone on the elk hunt and was coming back home. I was actually driving from northwest Colorado to Denver to get on a flight. And I called up Dutch to tell Dutch what, Dutch Sheets what the Lord had spoke to me about Jeremiah 33. 3. And I called him up and he said, I don't believe this. He said, God's been speaking to me, Jeremiah 33. 3. And so we began what we began a dialogue in Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. And then God spoke to my heart and said, I want you to do a Jeremiah 33 3 tour across Florida. And so we started planning this Jeremiah 33 3 tour in different cities across Florida. Gainesville, we did one in Fort Walton Beach. Uh, we did one in Pensacola, I think. And, and, uh, but we, were, we had one scheduled down in Key West. And in November of 2005, I had this dream. And in this dream, I took down an old picture off a wall. The frame of this picture was rickety and shaky. And where it was glued together at the corners, it had come unglued and it was just a picture that was holding the frame together and it had worm holes in it and, and worm grooves in the picture frame and I, I took it down in this dream and set it on the floor and etched on the wall there as if though it had been carved from the dawn of history was 6 slash 17 
can call me Chuck. 617 was June 17th of 2006. It was the day that we were going to do a Jeremiah 33 free tour in Key West, Florida. And so I took this dream, didn't know what to do with it, and I called up Chuck Pierce. I said, Chuck, I had this dream where I was taking this old picture down off a wall. And he said, well, what was on the picture? I said, I have no idea. All I know was the frame. I didn't see the picture. I just saw the frame and it had wormholes in it. He said, Kenny, whatever you're doing, you're going to be dealing with the spirit of wormwood. A spirit of wormwood is mentioned in the Bible. It's also mentioned in C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters in that book. One of the demonic strongholds is called wormwood. And, uh, and so, we didn't really, still really didn't know what it meant. So we just started praying into June 17th. Because we didn't fully understand what God was doing. And so June 17th comes. We've been praying into this meeting. My, Cheryl and I and a lot of the intercessors that we run with, the prayer warriors, they were helping us pray. And so we descended on Key West, Florida. And Key West, probably only second to San Francisco, is the homosexual capital of America. And... So we descended on this place and we had a, I had rented a hotel room about twice the size of this building here. And we were holding this meeting in there. And then all of a sudden, the power went out across the entire island of Key West. Bam! To this day, they do not know what caused the power to go out. To this day. It was not a storm. They do not know. But we know. Because what happened, the Lord unseated a principality that was holding Key West in bondage. Because we were there doing Jeremiah 33 3. We were calling the Lord and answering, and He was answering us and showing us great and mighty things that we did not know. But we were not fully, we did not fully see yet what was going to take place. And so in that meeting, there was a man who came up to me and he says, I want you to pray for me because I'm running for the mayor of Key West, Florida. Well, I didn't know this man, but I knew his mom and dad. His mom and dad had been faithful prayer warriors in Key West for many generations. And, uh, and so I went to them. Their son, Morgan, was a born-again Christian. And I went to Frank and Antoinette, and I said, can your son win this race? They said, he doesn't stand a chance. And so he said, they said he's got to beat a 22-year incumbent and so in the process, the 22-year incumbent raised $50,000 for his campaign. Morgan raised 1000 for his. But on Rosh Hashanah 2006, one year after I received the word about Jeremiah 33.3, there was an election in Key West, Florida. And in that election, Morgan McPherson became the mayor of Key West, Florida and won the election by 24 votes on Rosh Hashanah. Now grab hold of this. The Jewish rabbi in the city of Key West went to his 24 uh, parishioners and told them to vote for Morgan McPherson to be the mayor of Key West Park. What the Lord was doing, remember the dream with the framework. He was changing the framework of that city. And then tonight in the service, and I've been... I, See, I've been in this Jeremiah 33 3 season again now for about two months. That everywhere I go, I'm getting three, three, threes. And two weeks in a row, I was in two different motels. One in San Antonio, and another one the following week in Colorado Springs. And both times, I was in room 333. <laughs> I put into a gas station to get gas, and the gas was $3.33. <laughs> sure, and I were watching the news, and on the news, it was 333 people. I mean, over and over and over again, we were getting this three, three, threes again. And it's like God is bringing us full circle. And tonight in the service, I felt so strongly that Port St. Joe is trying to give birth to what God has promised this city. I felt it in worship. It was as if though it was wanting to give birth and needed to give birth, but it couldn't give birth. And I want, to, I want to share with you what the Lord told me about Port St. Joe tonight. 
I'm so glad that we're here. Listen, this is what he said. Port St. Joe has been pregnant with the visions and dreams of God and has been pregnant with awakening. It has not been able to give birth because of the accuser of the brethren which has been accusing the region with many much slander and false accusations. But the Lord says this week, I will shut the mouth of the destroyer and establish a throne of righteousness and worship over the region in Jesus' name. Oh, wow. Now that is for this territory and region. There's been an accuser of the brethren that has accused this region that has stopped the birth pains from coming forth and from the the visions of God being born in this territory and region. And, and it's almost like you're in a Revelation 12 place where you're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony and you love not your wife unto death. Let me say it again. You're overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony, and you love not your wife unto death. Port St. Joe is in a place of birthing tonight. And I feel like tonight and tomorrow night, that we're going to give birth to something in this region. I've come in here to be a midwife to help you give birth to the purposes and plans of God across this territory and region. And whatever has stopped it, God is going to put a stop to it in Jesus' name. The accuser of the brethren, his mouth is shut right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you, Father. I like it when your wife says, Come on, because then you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Let me show you something else. I have a teaching. It's called the Sons of Ishikar. When I was getting, during worship, when I started getting this download, I went and looked up, because in this Sons of Ishikar, I have all the Hebraic months I've taught them here, and what they mean. And we're, we're in the 19th day of the Hebraic month of Av. Now listen, it's A.B. This is the fifth month on the biblical calendar. Is connected to the tribe of Simeon. This month is. It's a month that you hear. That you need to hear what God is saying. It's also a month of predestined connection. There's no doubt in my mind that the Lord has predestined our connection before the dawn of His right. And it happens to be tonight that God is bringing this predestined connection into place. It's a month to decide what you have heard. But now listen to this. And this month of August is a month that you give birth. That's why I was sensing this thing needing to give birth. We're in a season right now that God wants to bring support St. Joe into His destiny. The Constitution of Florida was birthed right here in this region. No wonder the enemy wants to stop. And, and you know on our logo we have in God we trust here in Florida that we trust the Lord and the enemy wants to stop the, the Lord's purpose is in this territory and region, but God has come here this weekend and is coming this weekend so that you give birth to His plans and His yes. purposes. So don't be surprised if the rest of this month you don't find yourself in corporate intercession that will last all night long because the rest of the month of August, you've got about ten more days of it, you're going to be giving birth to the purposes and the plans of God over poor Sam Joe in Jesus' name. And you just need to go ahead and decide, I'm going to be inconvenienced for the rest of this month. I'm going to allow God to inconvenience me because when you do, you're going to see glory birthed out of that inconvenience. Yes. That's a good word there. I don't care where you come from. <laughs> Listen, this month is a season that the lion roars. This is why the Lord's going to shut the mouth of the destroyer. That's what he said. It's a month that the lion roars. I don't know if you ever heard a lion roar and didn't know it was going to roar. Where I used to pastor in Central Florida, a little place called Davenport, about three miles away. Well, it's about Davenport's about the size, population-wise, of Fort St. Joe. But about three miles from where our church was, was an exotic farm that housed cats. Not house cats. <laughs> they house lions, lionesses, tigers, tigers, mountain lions, Florida panthers, western puma, bobcats, lynx. I mean, they had, they had all kinds of excitement. But about 5.30 every morning, I would come to the church on some mornings. 
I'm an early riser anyway. My morning is usually at 5 o'clock. She knows the She drives her crazy. I wake up at 5. I'm, I'm ready by, by 5 30. I'm ready to go by 6 a.m. I'm not riding 15 miles on my bicycle. And so I go to the church sometimes at 5 30 a.m. and it would open the door. And all of a sudden, from three miles away, you hear this lion begin to roar, piercing the darkness of night. And if you're not expecting it, it scares you. Because, I mean, it, it's unlike anything you have heard, especially at night when there's no sounds at all. You're trying to close the car door quietly so you don't wake the neighbors up around the church there. And all of a sudden, from three miles away. But it's like the bellow of it that comes from way down deep in here. I can't do it like the lion does. It comes from three miles away and it pierces the darkness. Well, this is a month that you allow the lion of Judah to roar on the inside of you. You don't bottle up your praise this month. You let your praise go out and you let it go out loud. And you get on the sidewalk out there and let it go out loud. You get wherever the enemy is trying to stop you and you let the praise of God go out loud. Listen to this. This is a month that God destroys so that He can reconstruct. You can almost use say that word to restore. This is a month that God is going to destroy the voice of the enemy so that the voice of the bride and the voice of the bridegroom comes forth. Listen to me. Jeremiah 33, when you get down to verse 11, it talks about the different voices that are going to be restored. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of uh, thanksgiving, the voice of the thank offering, and the voice of the bride, and the voice of the bridegroom. See, the whole book of Jeremiah 33 is about restoration. The whole thing is about restoring. And God is coming in here, and He's going to begin restoring in Port St. Joe His purpose and His plan. Listen, this is a month where, where the earth contracts and the secrets, the secrets of pregnancy is revealed. The secrets of pregnancy are children. The secrets of pregnancy is what you bring forth. Before they had sonogram, you never knew what you were going to have. We didn't know. Sure, we, we have four kids. And the oldest one is 40 and the two youngest ones, we have twin boys. They're 34. Jennifer, I think, is 37. Then we have seven grandkids, right? Seven now. And the latest one is about four months old. His name is uh, Lee. And uh, sorry, we keep up with them all. He's brand new. He's just four months old. <laughs> but when she and I were having kids, we didn't have sonogram. And when the twins came along, see, this was the secret of pregnancy. We didn't know she was having twins. And she gets big and big. And see, and at home, we already have a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and we're just expecting one. And so, <laughs> she's holding her belly. Please, please, please. You probably already know. And, uh, and so, Cheryl kept telling the doctor, I think I'm going to have to. He said, no, you're just eating too much. Because I'm going to shut it. She, but she wasn't. She says, I'm not. I'm not. And so he would put her on a certain kind of diet and try to get her to, where she was still getting the calories she needed, but also keep her from gaining weight. But she was still just getting way out here. And she says, no, there's too much going on inside, inside here. You know what it feels like when one's kicking around when you've already had two. But there was too much going on. It's like a war going on inside of her. <laughs> All the punching and stuff like this going on. And so a month out, she said, I'm having twins. He says, I'm going to do an x-ray. So they did an x-ray of, the, of her belly. And sure enough, there were twins. But they still couldn't tell what they were. It turned out to be two identical twins. See, that's the secrets of pregnancy. And there's a secret that only Jeremiah 33 3 can reveal. And it's revealed through calling unto me, and I will answer you. The Amplified says, Call unto me, 
and I will answer you and show you things that have been hidden, things that have been fenced in, things that have been under darkness. I'm going to show those to you. So it's a month that the secrets of pregnancy is revealed, and it's a month that the kingdom is advanced through partnership. It's important that you that we learn how to partner. There, there. See, you can go to lunch with anybody, but you can only go to war with people who like to war. Everybody can't go to war. You've got some tiptoe through the tulip type Christians, you know that they're just a manby pamby type of Christian. You know what kind those are, don't you? You ever seen that Geico commercial? Where the sergeant has turned therapist. Yeah. You seen that? Yeah. And there's a guy who's laying on the couch, and he says, "And that's why yellow makes me sad." And the sergeant turned therapist. He says, "You know what makes me sad? You do. <laughs> why don't we just chug on over to Mammy Pammy Land, or maybe we can find some self confidence for you, you jack wagon?" <laughs> and starts crying tissue. Cry, baby. See that picture of the guy laying on the couch is a person you can go to lunch with any day. But you can't go to war with him. The guy who's turned sergeant turned therapist where God's trying to take his church today is what you go to war with. Because they don't have their feelings sitting on their shoulders. So they, you can go to war with that. And so we're in that season right now where you need to begin partnering with people who have a vision for Port St. Joe. Not a vision for getting their own needs met, but a vision for God to come into this city and into this territory and region. See, the church got off track back in the 90s, especially. It's starting to get back on track now. But it got focused on meeting the needs of everybody. Getting all their needs met. And so we begin to build churches on whether or not that church can meet the person's need. And so we would build our ministry around meeting needs. And so, but what you brought into the church and what you ministered to and what you raised up were need-oriented welfare people. Wow. Yeah. They were on spiritual welfare. Mm -hmm. They were coming to church every Sunday to spiritual welfare. Now we're moving out of that and we're raising up warriors who have a kingdom mindset, who are Matthew 6.33 minded, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things that the need-oriented people seek after that, they're added unto you. Yes. Amen. So, listen. In that word called to me, he is he's saying I am positioning this region and this territory in this season to unlock things that's not been able to unlock before. To give birth to things that's not been able to give birth to before. Call unto me and I will answer you. That word call is kara. It means to call out. To cry. To invite. To mention to preach, to proclaim, to pronounce and publish. Listen, the promise doesn't come through passivity, but the promise comes through consciously choosing to call unto Him. Because God wants to reveal the hidden matter to you and I that only comes when we call on Him. And I just, I feel like tonight we're just going to enter in, in a little bit a place of just intense intercession that's going to unlock some things. When the Lord gives you this kind of word that He's given you tonight for this region and territory, He also is giving you access. He is saying access is granted. When He gives you the kind of word tonight that He gave you about this region, that He's given you out of Jeremiah 33, 3, He says, I'm now granting you access to my throne to unlock things that you've not been able to unlock before. To give birth to the visions and the dreams that God has over this territory and region. Every Tuesday night, I meet with a group of people. It's, it's our church. Because I travel mostly on the weekends. I do church and I meet with a group of people. We do church on Tuesday nights. A lot of religious folks will tell you that it's not church because we don't do it on Sunday. You know, but so what? And so... We, we pray, like last Tuesday night, we hit a vein. I've never done this before. My, my heart is usually America and, and Florida. And I heard so clearly Psalms 2 verse 8 call to me. I mean, he said, uh, ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. And we spent an hour just praying for the nations. 
But about two years ago, we were praying for Florida and awakening to come to Florida. And in this meeting, I was caught up into the heavens. And I uh, haven't only experienced something like this a couple of times in my life. And as I was caught up in the heavens, I was brought before the throne of God. And I began to see a vision of God releasing a golden river of fire out of heaven into Florida. And as this fire was being, the golden river of fire was being released into Florida, I saw angels of fire begin to walk in this river of fire and all throughout the state of Florida, all up and down this panhandle here, all up and down the peninsula, these angels of fire were walking. And then all of a sudden the river turned and went into the entire nation. As this was going on, I was relaying to the people I was in the prayer meeting with. It was like I was way up here and I was shouting it back down to them. And I began to hear the voice of the Father say this. He said, tell Florida access is granted. Access is granted. And when you release a word like this tonight, Jeremiah 33, 3, He's not only saying to you that I'm positioning you, He's now saying access is granted for you to unlock the things, give birth to the things you've not been able to unlock and give birth to before. There's also an authority that comes with this word tonight. An authority that is released Released to see Port St. Joe come into awakening. An authority that is released through this word. See, I, I, I believe that we walk in different levels of authority. I believe that people have different levels of authority. I get that from Matthew 25 where he gave the talents. He gave to one one, to another he gave two, and to another he gave five talents. He gave them different levels of authority, different levels of gifting. I don't believe that everybody walks in the same authority or same level of gifting. And so, whenever, I believe that we also get authority for assignments as well. But I know this because of the history of this city. There's an authority from heaven that rests on this city for you to begin to unlock God's purposes and plans over this territory and region. So, He's positioning this region He's given us access in this region. He's also now giving you authority in this region. And then he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, call unto me and I will answer you and tell or show in some translation. And that word in the Hebrew is the word nagad, N-A-G-A-D. And it actually means to bring something forward or bring it into the light. Now watch what I say tonight because the Lord is going to begin bringing Port St. Joe into the light. Watch as he begins to illuminate this city, not just on a city level, but he's going to illuminate it across the region and across the territory. Because he's going to bring this city and territory into the light of Jeremiah 33.3. It also means what the Lord is saying here too when he releases Jeremiah 33.3. There's an unlocking and a birthing and the manifestation of, listen to this, what has been held up or held back. What has been held up or held back here? There's something that has been held up. You know what it is. Some of you others know what it is, but there's something that has been held up or held back that the, that the enemy has warred against. Now remember Daniel, I think it's in Daniel 10, where he received the dream, but... He began praying from the moment that he received it, but the answer was held up in the heavens because the prince power of Persia began to war against the answer that was coming down to Daniel. And so Daniel couldn't get the answer for three weeks. He went into a 21-day fast, and it wasn't until Michael the archangel came and helped Gabriel, so then Gabriel could come and begin releasing the answer of the vision and the answer that Daniel needed. Something's been held back. But God is saying tonight that I'm going to release that that's been held back over Point St. Joe. I'm going to release it because I'm closing the mouth of the destroyer. Yes. So just get ready for it to be released in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Whatever has been held up or held back is going to be released. There's also a releasing in this territory and region. I heard David talk about it, of signs and wonders and miracles. Yes. And I just decree over you right now that Jeremiah 33.3 3 is unlocking another level of signs, wonders, and miracles. 
I'll talk about this more tomorrow night because we're going to go into signs and wonders and miracles tomorrow night. But since this time last year, I've seen more healings, one miracle, than I've seen more healings than one miracle in one year's time than I've seen in the last 10 years put together. It's just been phenomenal. We've seen probably two dozen heavenly knee jobs. You could call them knee replacements. Where people have been healed in the knees. I'll read the testimony to, to you tomorrow night where a girl had a, a hysterectomy. She was 30 years of age and she was wanting to have kids again. And had I known this, I probably would not have had the faith to pray for her. But she walks up in the meeting August 10th, one year ago, walks up in the meeting and says, pray for me, my husband, and I want to have more kids. So I prayed for her. And at the time, I didn't know that she didn't have any ovaries. I didn't know at the time that she didn't have any way, form, or fashion. She'd had a hysterectomy by the age of 30. But today, and I've got pictures in my briefcase there of the sonogram where she has two brand new ovaries that when she went last November to get an ultrasound because she was pumping out estrogen and she wasn't supposed to be. And uh, she has two brand new ovaries. Wow. That's a miracle. Yes, yeah. it is. That's why I only call that one a miracle. Because what wasn't there is now there. That's right. But there's a, there's a new level of signs, wonders, and miracles that are coming to us across this land and across this nation. So you just might as well get ready, poor St. Joe, because the Lord is going to unlock a healing ministry in this region, in this territory, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. I, I feel it right now. Yes. Hallelujah. It's almost as if though you start letting the you know well, I, you start letting the public know you pray for the sick and they're going to beat a path to your door. Yes. That's right. Years ago, back when I first moved to Florida, I did two things when I first started pastoring the church. I went and taught a teen challenge, which used to be in Winter Haven, Florida, and I got kicked out of there um, three or four months after going there because I was casting demons out of these kids. <laughs> and uh, and then after I got kicked out, I prophesied that the staff would be exposed and the administration would be exposed with homosexuality. And 30 days later, the person who caused me to get kicked out turned out to be a lesbian and was in an affair with another staff person there on campus there. That's why I got kicked out because those demons were manifesting in them. But I also started doing healing me, but I got reinstated. Yeah. I got reinstated but I forgot that. I got reinstated back at Team Challenge once all the demons were fired. <laughs> <laughs> and then we started doing healing meetings once a month in our church. And we invited the public. We broadcast it in the newspaper. We put it on the radio. We would put signs up at Walmart. And we would have healing meetings. And we didn't care if they were saved or unsaved. We were going to pray for them. And it got so powerful that people we didn't even know, sinners, would start coming. And this one girl, I'll share this story with you. This one young girl, she's probably 21 at the time. Her name was Kathy. <clears throat> she, she calls me on the phone. She says, I hear that you pray for the sick. I said, yes, I do. She said, would you pray for my, my dad? He's in a coma. Been in a coma for two months. The doctor said his brain is vegetating. That he'll never come out of the coma. And uh, could you pray for him? And I said, yeah. I said, why don't you come by the church office and I'll pray with you personally. Her sister-in-law attended our church. That's how she found out. But this little girl wasn't saved. She didn't know the Lord like you and I know the Lord. So she comes by and I'm praying for her, praying for Kathy. And the Lord speaks to me and says, I want you to give Kathy your handkerchief. So I took the handkerchief out of my back pocket and gave it to Kathy. And I said, in Acts 19, they took pieces of clothing, handkerchiefs from Paul, and they would lay this on diseased people and people that were sick, people that were demon-possessed. And the demons would leave and the diseases would leave the people. I said, I want you to go down to Sarasota Stick this in your dad's pillowcase. And so 
she takes the handkerchief and she just goes down and drives right down there. Doesn't tell anybody what she's doing as if though what I have told her is going to happen. I mean, she just obeys. She sticks this handkerchief in his pillowcase and in one hour, this man who had been in a coma for two months comes out of the coma and is talking to everybody there. Listen to that. The doctor says he was vegetating. I didn't know it. Because see, she didn't know to get all excited and call me back up and give me the testimony. Because see, she's not church. She doesn't know that she's supposed to do that. And so three days later, she calls me up and she says, can I have another hanky? I said, yeah. I'm thinking, what's going on? Because I don't know the man's people. I don't know the guy's come out of the car. I said, but why do you need another hanky? She said, well, I did just what you said. I put the handkerchief in his pillowcase, and in one hour, he came out of the coma. And she said, he was out of the coma for 24 hours. And then they cleaned his bed clothes, threw the handkerchief away, and he went back in the coma. And I got mad. Not at her. But I got mad. I said, Lord, that's not the way it's supposed to work. I said, come on by here and get another hanky. So she, while she's driving, I'm right now on three by five note cards healing scriptures. Because I'm going to teach this little girl how to read the scriptures over her day. She gets there, I teach her how to pray. I taught her what to pray. I wrote it down for her. I said, I want you to pray this over your dad. Because see, desperate people will do desperate things. They, they, don't, they don't get religious about it. And so... I said, and I asked the Lord why she was coming. I said, why? And the Lord said this, because I have something to prove. And he told me what to do. So when she comes, I give her the handkerchief. I teach her how to pray. I give her the three by five cards. I give her another handkerchief. I said, this time, you tell all the doctors, all the nurses, all the orderlies that are around there in intensive care that this is a prayer cloth and that you're believing God for your dad's healing. She sticks it back in his pillowcase. In 30 minutes, he's back out of the coma. In seven days, he's standing inside our congregation giving this testimony of what the Lord did for him. And all it, does, all it takes from you is to take a risk. That's all it takes. If you'll just take the risk of praying for somebody, you'll see miracles and signs and wonders. There was a guy from Africa one day, years ago, back in 1989, many him was pastoring in Orlando. And he had this guy from Nigeria come and he was speaking. And Benny would have pastor's luncheon, and Cheryl and I would go to this pastor's luncheon. And this little Nigerian, he was probably all of five foot two. He was about Rick Pino's size. <laughs> and uh, but in the spirit, he was huge in the spirit. And I felt like I was looking up at him in the spirit because of his statue. You could feel his statue. And I'll never will forget he'd come up to me and he takes both of my hands and he says, You must take risk. If you know take risk, risk take you. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. It's down deep on the inside of me tonight that you have to take a risk. The church of Port, Port St. Joe has got to take a risk. The radical remnant of this region has got to take a risk. If you don't take the risk, the risk is going to take you. Listen to this. Jeremiah 33, 3 unlocks grace and favor. If I say the word grace, what immediately comes to your mind? Somebody tell me. American favor. Mountains fall. Mountains fall. That's out of Zechariah 4. Somebody else. The unmerited favor is the most common answer. And, it, and that is a correct answer. And what Jenny just said about mountains falling is out of Zechariah 4 is an answer. But it is unmerited favor. It is about mountains falling. But grace when it's rendered unto you is the empowerment from God to be who He's called you to be. Yes. It is an empowerment. He says, I'm giving you the power 
to be the son and daughter that I've called you to be. When you get over there in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, he talks about the sons of God. <coughs> and he identifies a couple of groups of people. He identifies a carnal man, he identifies a spiritual man, and then he identifies the sons of God. And when you get to that part where it says that the creation groans and travails for the manifestation of the sons of God, in the Greek it's the word weos. And it actually means mature sons. Where there's another Greek word where he calls them children in one place, it doesn't mean sons, it actually means technon, it's the word for a child. But there is the word weos, where he says the earth groans and travails for the weos, the manifestation of the weos, are the matured sons of God. Those who are walking in humility. Those who know the heart and the voice of the Father. Those are the ones that creation is waiting for. And so while, the, while a lot of the church is, is in war with one another, that's the technon, that's the carnal man warring with each other. He, the earth groans and travails. Port St. Joe groans and travails for the manifestation of the weos. Now listen to this. When, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, He comes up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descends upon Him in the form of a dove, and a voice comes out of heaven and says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father there doesn't use the term technon to mean child. He uses the term weos to mean a mature son. And it wasn't until then that the mature son came that the signs and wonders and miracles began manifesting through His ministry. Well, that's a good word there. This is why you need the grace of empowerment, the empowerment to walk as a son, not as a child. Wow. Listen, this Jeremiah 33, 3 unlocks blessings that break every curse. You know, sometimes we focus too much on the curse when there's a covenant and a blessing that's greater than the curse. Yes. Right. See, generation curses may come. This right here, I have to give Wendy, daughter of the Lord, to share on our credit for this. Generation curses may come knocking at your door because of the sins of the Father, but you don't have to open the door to them. Yeah. You don't have to open that door because there's a blessing and a covenant that's greater than whatever sin the generations behind you did. Yeah. There's a covenant and a blessing that's greater than that. And so don't open the door to whatever the enemy has been saying. Oh, that runs in my family. Don't open the door to that. Wow. That sickness and disease runs in my family. Don't open the door to that. Yeah. Don't claim that. There's also an unlocking and birthing of strategies for poor St. Joe with this word tonight. I'm telling you, I just see it now. There are people, those of you that are here, especially you dreamers, you're going to start getting downloads of dreams for this region and for this territory. Those of you that flow in prophetic words and prophetic, hear the prophetic voice of the Lord, just get ready because there's an unlocking of a greater prophetic measure coming over this region in Jesus' name. Watch for signs in the community to prophesy to you. Watch for the 333s. Watch for... Like I said to the prophetic, everything's prophetic. You just you just start looking around, you'll see prophetic stuff going on. Amen. You will. I mean, I stopped in I stopped in uh, Cross City today to have lunch, and I went and had lunch at a uh, some kind of place called an Inn. What Inn was it, Sheriff? Do you remember? Cypressine, Cypressine, and they had fresh fried mullet, swamp cabbage. And boiled okra. And for a boy from Alabama, it's a buffet. A boy from Alabama doesn't come any better than that. You know? And so I I wrote on Facebook because I love to see what kind of what people remark. I wrote on Facebook that I was in at the Cypress Inn in Cross City, the most redneck I didn't like this, but it's the most redneck in all the flock. There's none more redneck than Cross City. And uh and so, I'm, I wrote that on there, told, told him I was with Cheryl. And then, all of a sudden, I'm going down the road and I get a call. And he said, this is such and such in Cross City, Pastor such and such. I said, yeah. He said, I just found out you were here. I got your number from Chris Mathis, he said. <laughs> and uh, he said, 
what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm on my way to Port St. Joe. And he said, he said, you are? I said, yeah, I'm speaking there Friday night, Saturday night, and sure I'm going to drive home Sunday. He said, well, could you just come in here and speak for us Sunday night? I've always wanted to speak in Cross City. I've always wanted to speak there. And see, to the prophetic, everything's prophetic. And that was just a prophetic act, putting that on Facebook. That's, a, that's all I use Facebook for, just to release the prophetic voice of the Lord. <laughs> Listen, strategies coming forward in Port St. Joe. Not only strategies, but there's a birthing, I'm telling you this weekend, as sure as I'm standing here, there's a birthing of awakening to another level of awakening that's going to take place in this town and a birthing of the prophetic realm. And I want you two guys to come back up here if you would. Because we're just going to go into a place right now just birthing and unlocking some things over this territory and over this region. 